Hi guys, it's Sophie. So as you know, if you've watched any other videos, I've had a bit of a reading slump um, recently, but I'm going to share my September wrap up with you guys. There's 10 books, which is surprising considering the slump, but they're all quite small, so hopefully you'll see why it's been quite slumpy. The first one I have to talk about is actually self-published, um, and that one is The Girl Who Took a Rocket to the Moon and Other Stories, and this one is by Jenny Eckloff, and it's illustrated by Sammy Ripley. Um, I was very kindly sent this by the author and even though it's self-published I'll leave you links to where you can get hold of it down below if you are interested. Um, and the reason I was so open to this and I don't often take books that are sent to me um, directly by the author or books which are self-published. Um, but why this appealed to me is this is a collection of children's stories um, telling stories about mental illness in a way that is potentially a bit more understandable for very young children. Um, and I just thought it was so well done, such an important thing. Um, and so yeah, I wanted to pick it up because it was important, but it is really good. Um, so the, like, the first one is um, the girl who took a rocket to the moon, which is about a young girl who um, leaves home to go on this trip. And it's supposed to be very exciting, but she's sort of feeling very overwhelmed by the whole experience and is sort of sitting in the rocket ship trying not to cry because she doesn't really want to be away from everyone that she loves and can't imagine having fun in a place where they're not there. Um, and that's talking a little bit about separation anxiety. Um, my favourite story was actually the last of them all, um, which is called The Bottle Cabinet, which is a story about a uh, little boy who, when he gets angry, has a little fire that starts in his hands and he doesn't really know what to do with it and, and can't, can't really deal with what's happening. So he puts it inside bottles and hides them in this room. And as he gets older, the bottles get bigger and bigger and bigger and harder to ignore. Um, and I just thought that was such a lovely way of talking about anger. I just thought it was really well done. And if you have young children who may be struggling with um, some emotional difficulties, even if it's not kind of mental illness, or if parents um, maybe have the mental illness and they want to try and explain it to their children, um, it might be worth just checking this out and seeing if it's something that might help you and your child. I really liked it. And look at the look at the little illustrations, aren't they lovely? The next one that I read was The Diving Bell and the Butterfly um, by Jean Dominic Baboy. Um, and I was sent this one um, as part of a book package um, that I got a little while ago. Um, and I had heard about this book a lot, um, but hadn't ever read it and never been really pulled to read it. I know it's a film, but I haven't watched the film either. Um, and it is a story of a man who used to be a really high-powered editor um, of fashion magazines and, and write, um, who has a horrible accident in which he is kind of trapped and locked in within his body. He knows what's going on, but he can't move anything apart from his eyelids. Um, and he communicates his story through blinking, um, a system of blinking that, that he designs um, with someone who's working at the hospital. Um, I'm glad I read it because I feel like it's one of those books that it's really good to read and the man can definitely write. Uh, I was surprised at how like fluid it was um, and like how funny it was considering how difficult it would have been to write it um, but I didn't absolutely love it. I get why lots of people might like it. It is you know there's the hope and the humanity in it all um, and the, the bravery of the story and the, and the amazing way it's told. Um, but I just didn't love it and I don't really know why. It's not that I dislike the book. Um, I just kind of felt as though I didn't really know where it was going and it felt a little bit journaly for me about what happened to him and I get that because it's kind of isn't like a memoir but I just wasn't really sure that there was a definitive reason for doing it besides obviously the need to communicate. Um, it just seemed a kind of strange middle ground to me between something that was formed as memoir and something that was trying to be something bigger than that and maybe talk about humanity and I didn't really get a sense of either really fulfilled. Um, yeah, a hard one. I know I totally get that lots of people really like it and don't get me wrong, the, the way it was written and um, the intelligence of the way it's written is, is really, really good and lovely, um, but it just didn't click with me in the way that I think it has with other people. Next one I have is a poetry collection and that is The Latest Winter by Maggie Nelson. Um, I really like Maggie Nelson um, and have read a few of her poetry collections. Um, but this was a new one that came out and I immediately asked for it as soon as um, as soon as I knew it was a thing. Um, and yeah, I quite liked it. There, again, this, this book felt somewhat disjointed. There were a few different things it was trying to do. 
um, I'm trying to find, I'm flicking through trying to find a poem as I'm talking to you. Um, there was parts of it that were just kind of about love and about that experience and about um, herself and um, again like just being in the world and just really short ones um, but it's also got a selection of poems that are written around and about 9-11 and I thought those were absolutely brilliant um, and that kind of closeness to it I'm trying to find one for you just give me give me a moment hopefully I'll figure it out okay I'm actually going to read you this whole poem because I just think it's brilliant and um, the poems around this in general are are very good um, so this one is called report from the field what's new is this white chunky coating on my tongue it's a taste of fear and metal and lost people. I first saw it that day I ran to your house with a t-shirt wrapped around my head. It was one of your t-shirts so it smelled good and I held it against the sky that was darkening. When I arrived I had to wipe the coating off my tongue with tissues and then with my nails. It was the souls of people. I think it was the souls of people. It happened again when I first went down to the site. People were taking pictures of the infernal nest and I could taste the metallic foam caking my tongue. Captain Joe says there are no filing cabinets, no computers, no desks, so you can only imagine what happened to the humans. Humans are so soft, Captain Joe says. For the first time I wondered if this were indeed a shadow life and the real people were living somewhere else, where there are no words like dirty nuke or chemical soup. But you don't refuse to breathe, do you? And breathe we do, one after another. I dream that I'm smoking and smoking, my lungs full of wet black leaves. I am so tired of seeing throngs of angry men in any country. In Muhammad Atta's will, I don't want pregnant women or a person who is not clean to come and say goodbye to me. I don't want women to go to my funeral or later to my grave. I am so tired of clean and unclean. I am so tired of you hating your birth. We were all born in slither. We all came out beautiful, glistening turds. Excuse me, I have to close the door, I say to the four guys eating burgers at the restaurant where I work. People are complaining about this smell, I explain, and they look at me strangely as if they haven't heard. I don't want to meet with other poets, hear the lyrics and the lukewarm politics. I don't want to go to academic teachings to discuss it. I don't want to write something pro or anti-American. I don't want to write a eulogy. All I want to say is I breathed you. We all breathed you. We breathed the souls of people. I think it was the souls of people. So that is The Latest Winter by Maggie Nelson. Next one, something very different, um, but something I am very much here for, and that is Patient or Pretender, and this is by three men, Felden, Ford and Reinhold, and this is a very old uh, psychiatry textbook around Munchausen's disorder. A little bit around Munchausen's by proxy, but mostly Munchausen's. And I can't really hold it up, so I'm not really much point. It's even the end is sort of a bit knackered. But the book itself is about why people have factitious disorders, why um, you would lie about being unwell, or that sort of thing. What it seems like, why that matters, why it happens to people, um, what the system can do to try and prevent these people from hurting themselves or killing themselves as they do. Um, and it was just fascinating. It's something I know very little about, and I really just wanted to read something about Munchausen's. It was so good. Um, this is an ex library edition. I don't know how you're going to get hold of it if you would want to read it, but you might be able to find it on like Amazon second hand or your favorite used bookshop site. Um, but yeah, it, I just I don't know. I, I love this sort of thing. I could buy like stacks of old psychiatry and psychology textbooks and just eat them up. Um, so very much my kind of thing. And I read it like in two nights of like, oh, I need to up, get back to it. And it's just absolutely fascinating. The next two I have are Mambuka picks, so I won't uh, talk about them too much. The first I've yet to review, and that is Washington Black by Essie Ediguan. And I need to review this one soon so I can return the copy to Tom. And the next one I have reviewed, and that one is Normal People by Sally Rooney. And I will link uh, my review of that one up above for you if you want to know what my thoughts are on that one. And then next is more Sally Rooney and that is Conversations with Friends. Um, this is a story about a married couple and two friends um, who were in a relationship when they were younger but uh, now aren't. Um, and the two the two women who had been in the relationship, um, one's called Bobby and what's, he, what's our main character called? Francis. And Francis begins an affair with the man in the married couple. Um, and we are talking about 
their relationship in essence. Um, I love normal people, if you haven't sort of flicked or heard me talk about that one, and was really hoping to love conversations with friends in the same manner. I liked conversation with friends and it definitely grew on me as I went past the halfway mark, but it took me a long time to warm up and I think as I am at my stage of my life right now, marriage drama doesn't appeal to me as much as 20, early 20s drama, um, and I think that was what it was. Um, I also found myself getting so annoyed at uh, Nick, I think it's called Nick in this, the man, and just raging at him <laughs> um, throughout, and somehow that you would think that would kind of engage me, but it just made me annoyed when I picked the book up. I'm still really glad I read it, um, but I think Normal People's a lot better than this, in my eyes. Um, yeah, it wasn't I disliked it, I just... I just didn't love it as much as normal people and I wasn't as into what was going on. And the next one I have is Lullaby by Lili Samani and I'd been wanting to read this one for a long time but there was so much buzz around it that I held back. Um, this one was translated from the French by Sam Taylor um, and it is the story of a nanny who goes to work in a house um, looking after two young children and she has the most fabulous reputation. This one's written as the perfect nanny I think in America um, and it's about her interacting with these children. Um, we know from the very first page that the children have died um, and we assume from the very first page that the nanny has done that. Um, though it doesn't necessarily say that. Um, but anyway, um, so we are knowing, going and knowing that something horrendous happens to these children and finding out why and learning about the nanny herself and it's, it's She's not a likeable character and you don't necessarily empathise with her throughout but you can kind of see the path she goes on and I really like that about Lila Slimani's writing. I've actually just read Adele which I'll talk about next month um, and found the same thing that you um, didn't necessarily agree with what was going on but you could see the, the pattern of the logic or the line that that character had followed. Um, so that is Lullaby. And then the last one I have to talk about for September is The Upstairs Room by Kate Murray Brown. Um, and I really enjoyed this. I would really recommend this if you're looking for a creepy, modern, horror, gothic feel um, book this autumn. It is a ghost story with no ghosts. I think it's so important that, and I don't feel like that spoilers at all, that you know before you go in you aren't going to get ghosts. Because I think a lot of people who've been disappointed with this book have been expecting like in real life ghosts and that isn't what this is it's a much more like haunting idea about memory and about what we leave behind when we leave a house and how what we bring into a building affects what we think of the building and how we interact with it uh, there are elements that you could consider to be supernatural but it isn't that it isn't that haunting I don't think that's what you're gonna get from this I think you'll feel haunted but not necessarily by ghosty, ghouly, creepy things, but it's so fabulous, um, really claustrophobic, it felt very familiar to me, it's set in a Victorian terrace house, I live in a Victorian terrace house, although they live in London and I live in the middle of nowhere, um, and it felt very English, I, I really liked that it felt so relatable um, as someone who lives in the UK, but yes, if you're interested in that one, definitely do pick it up. Um, <laughs> So I've read, uh, you know, I've read a little bit this month. It's not like I've not read anything, and I think I've read more than I think I have this month. Um, but it's been a bit drippy and you know, a bit slow, and I don't think that's any of those books fault at all. I actually quite enjoyed most of them. Um, but I do just think that's why it's it's felt quite slow and quite kind of <sighs> tired month. Um, but I've got a week off now, so I am going to film in a second about what I'm going to be reading then, but I'm going to be trying to relax, read and just take it a bit slow and I'm hoping that that will mean my reading picks up again and I feel a bit more able to engage intellectually with things because I just haven't had the energy to do that for a little while. Um, I will chat to you guys soon in my next video and look after yourselves until then. Bye bye.